a single centre uh, to demonstrate um, equivalence or non-inferiority of a, troch a greater trochanteric approach for intramedullary femoral, femoral nailing of mid-shaft femoral fractures. Um, the hypothesis the authors have stated clear at the start of the article uh, is um, they would have seek to demonstrate that there's no difference in hip function associated with the two surgical techniques. Uh, the background to this is that um, anti-grade nailing is preferred management for femoral fractures. Uh, two common complications that are prevalent in the minds of surgeons, from my discussion with the reps and also from surgeons this week, um, is that uh, the piriform fossa approach is associated with, um, can be associated with hip and thigh weakness and pain, and also heterotopic ossification. Uh, usual, the traditional entry port was via the piriform fossa, so on the medial side of the, the greater trochanter. Um, but recent times have seen a shift towards uh, greater trochanter um, entry and nailing of these fractures. Um, this comes on the back of a clinical trial, a series of 47 patients um, conducted in Germany, which I evaluated a new anti-grade nail for Smith and Nephew Trigen uh, nail, um, which has a, a five degree, sorry, four degree um, varus bend at the top to uh, account for the, the entry point for these nails. This image, a bit hard to make out there. Uh, the, the issue that this addressed was the straight nails um, have been associated with fracture comminution, um, issues with reaming of the canal eccentric reaming into the medial side and undermining the cortex there, and also various deformity after the procedure. Um, so for my own benefit, I opened up an operative, uh, a textbook of operative orthopedics and familiarised myself with the approach. So the landmarks are the greater, uh, greater trochanter, an incision is made, you know, one to two to three to four centimetres um, medial from here. Um, the gluteus medius fascia is uh, incised, Fiber, a fibre splitting incision identifies um, the area over the piriform fossa, which is further characterised by palpation. Uh, guide wire is placed over the area and using sequential AP and lateral II images, um, the correct entry site is found by finding the midpoint of the femoral canal on both images. Uh, unfortunately, I'm going to find a, a, a diagram for the um, trochantic Approach, but I understand that the incision is made a little bit further lower down and the glute gluteus medius incisions continued revealing the bare greater trochanter underneath. Um, there are issues with both of these approaches. Uh, through the pure, piriform fossa, I've already mentioned um, that there can be... Uh, no, I haven't. So in some of the issues with the piriform fossa approach is that you can have femoral neck fractures or um, cut off with the a more anterior approach, which is thought to contribute to anterior thigh pain. A more medial approach can lead to a stress riser and potentially a, a fracture of the femoral neck, and also the end vessels of the medial circumflex artery are at risk here. Uh, if, uh, the approach is made too anterior, there can also be comminution of the proximal segment. Um, I have already mentioned uh, with the greater trochanter there have been issues identified with eccentric reaming of the medial cortex, undermining. So this study enrolled uh, participants over a four-year period at a single centre in Alabama. Um, its inclusion criteria were um, participants that were gave uh, informed consent and had a fracture located between two centimetres below the lesser trochanter and seven centimetres above the knee joint. Um, exclusion criteria included age below the 19, Pathological fractures or fractures that are deemed not treatable with an IM nail. Um, over that four-year period, um, 114 patients were uh, enrolled. After enrolment, uh, computer randomisation put them into the two groups, those that had piriform fossa nailing with a straight anti-grade nail and those that had greater trochanter nailing with a, um, a four degrees varus nail. Um, Operations are conducted by a senior orthopaedic accredited trainee, at typically a fourth or fifth year, with all patients in the supine position. Um, ignore that next heading. And functional outcomes were assessed at three, six, and 12 months. They included a, a, a 
<coughs> a patient administered health questionnaire and functional assessments by licensed physiotherapists, which I'll elaborate on further. The primary outcome in this study was patient function. So they used the, utilised the Western Ontario McMaster's University Osteoarthritis Index, which is abbreviated to the WOMAC, um, which is patient administered, a validified multi panel instrument looks at patient symptoms, self reported symptoms of uh, pain and also stiffness, and also a self reported uh, level of function for their personal ADLs. Uh, yields a score out of 0 to 100, <coughs> which can then be compared between uh, patients. Uh, the other primary outcomes for patient function included uh, a chair stand test where the patient uh, crosses their arms and without assistance arises um, from the seated position to the standing position. There was also the timed up and go test, uh, a similar yeah. test where, which is timed from the seated position taking one to two steps forward um, and a physiotherapist evaluation of the strength of the tensile facets and latte muscle and also gluteus medius. Secondary outcomes that were evaluated in the study were intraoperative parameters such as operative time, uh, length of the incisions that needed to be made, um, and also fluoroscopy time. Um, patient factors such as time to healing, delayed union, and non unions were also assessed. However, um, definitions were not provided in the article for delayed unions or non unions. Heterotopic ossification was also assessed. Um, sample size calculations were provided in the report in the article and with a, a paucity of data comparing these two methods, um, they suggested that 100, 100 patients are required uh, over two, the two groups controlling the intervention to detect a 10% difference with 90% power for continuous variables. That is the, the 0 to 100 scoring of the WOMAC and also the results of the strength testing and functional assessments. Um, a 30 percent with 100 patients, uh, they thought they could have a confidence with a power of 90 percent to detect a 30 percent difference uh, for categorical variables. Um, simple te analysis, statistical analysis methods were used, uh, students t-test, chi-square for parametric data, and the Mann-Whitney and Fisher's exact, exact test for non-parametric methods. Um, the, the article was well uh, reported with in line with consort criteria. Uh, participant flow, 114 uh, were enrolled, although the number that were excluded from the study are not reported. Um, of these, uh, they were all randomised to one or the other intervention. Everyone that was randomised to that invention, intervention received. 11 patients were lost from one follow-up group and 10 were lost from another. So they continued to um, Losses to fight were equal on both sides. Uh, fracture classifications were compared between the two uh, groups the two interventions, there are no significant differences there. Functional outcomes, uh, there was a, a single positive finding, a statistically significant difference between the anti-grade nail inserted through the greater tr uh, trochanter. We are able to do 13 chair to stand repetition with 11 for the piriform fossa nails. No other statistical significant differences. Um, when the two groups were uh, analysed for ch differences in heterotopic ossification, it was found that the group that had piriform uh, fossa nailing had higher rates of the higher end uh, book. Time was uh, 29 minutes shorter for those that used a greater trochanter approach. Um, although the ranges for these are quite large, 35 minutes to 187 minutes. 
incision lengths were, were significantly longer for the piriform fossa group to uh, obtain access to um, in reaming, and fluoroscopy time was uh, significantly longer as well for the piriform fossa. Um, a comment on these is that perhaps a median would have been a more appropriate descriptive statistic than an average, um, giving us a, more, a better idea of what uh, values for these figures lay closer to the middle. There was no significant difference between the two for the time to healing, delayed union or non-unions. Um, adverse outcomes were reported for this study. Um, however, as pointed out by the sample size calculations, the study was underpowered to try and find significant differences between the two. In terms of a descriptive exercise, you can see that um, there are more hematomas in the piriform fossil group. There was one screw breakage in the piriform fossa group and five in the trochanteric group. Um, in terms of malalignment, there was more numbers of that in the piriform fossa group compared to trochanteric. However, obviously these numbers wouldn't reach significant. Um, so in terms of uh, analysis of this article, um, is the question relevant? Is there any functional difference between the two? I think a valuable article, a uh, well-designed trial, assessing a worthwhile question. Um, I understand that greater trochanteric nailing is a relatively new approach to nailing of the femur, um, and any, uh, any data to lead us either way with whether there's a difference between functional outcome, particularly in the uh, pain or patient uh, recovery afterwards, is worthwhile. Um, an original protocol was published and available to all, um, all enrollees into the study and a quick analysis of that which was put up in 2003 in a trial which showed that there's no change in the study protocol during the study which um, reassures us of some element of methodological rigour. Were the outcomes appropriate? Um, the WOMAC is a, a valid validated um, instrument, which is reassuring. It's not a questionnaire which they've written self-fulfilling prophecy. Um, adductor strength and functional evaluations. These have been um, published in the literature and referenced for these injuries and for this intervention. Um, there was a, a greater tendency to isolate specific muscles and to measure the forces going through these, whereas this paper tended to look at the functional consequences in terms of sit to stand and Um, intraoperative parameters are, were worthwhile parameters to pursue and we saw significant differences there and it's reassuring they were happy to publish adverse outcomes for both the intervention and the control. Um, in terms of the, the conclusions that the authors drew at the end of the paper, um, clearly the, the study was powered um, to be sensitive enough to pick up a, a clinically significant difference in the functional outcome. Um, one, I found that second point buried in the, the discussion that the patients in group B, which was the trochanteric nailing, outperformed patients in group A um, on both the chair to stand test and timed up and go test, both six months and 12 months. Although the only difference in this, the chair stand test at, months, at six months is significant. Um, I think that's an optimistic interpretation of the data. I think the difference between 13 and 11 is relatively inconsequential and all patients caught up in terms of these functional tests by the end of the study. Um, also, I'd point out that if there's a, a no statistically significant two groups, it's probably worthwhile just to not try and lead the, the reader to the conclusion that there is. Um, the final point was that they, they recognised there were more, more patients with a more severe degree of um, of heterotopic ossification in the, around the thigh in the Brooker classification, um, which itself is of um, contentious as to its usefulness. Conflicts of interest that were declared by the authors, the manufacturer of the intervention that was being assessed funded the, uh, uh, more than $10,000 towards the trial, which is a significant source of bias. 
two of the authors had conflicts of interest to, to disclose, um, one receiving payments of services from a third party and the other one having a financial relationship with a biomedical company. Uh, which authors these were, whether they're lead authors or minor authors, isn't disclosed, nor are the, the companies nor the services. Um, so my conclusions at the end of this study, I think overall this is uh, a well-designed, uh, well-reported, uh, prospective randomised controlled time, uh, trial, which does yield valuable information for comparing the functional outcomes between the, the two um, interventions. However, I think we need to be mindful of the, the potential conflicts of interest that clearly do exist, or may exist. Um, and before making any clinical recommendations, I think it would be worthwhile waiting for more data regarding adverse outcomes for the trochanteric entry foretold to accumulate. I have to excuse that last, um, that last point. It wasn't until my conversation with the, the gentleman from Cynthia's tonight that I realised that the cost of of both of these prostheses is, is the same. I thought potentially a, a newer prosthesis with a, a four millimetre uh, varus line might be more expensive and so it might be more difficult to, to justify in terms of theatre time, etc. Questions? Can I ask you who said